Welcome to the Spiritual Voice, where Spirit speaks through everything and everyone. Together we learn from masters from all walks of life to explore spirituality through direct experience so you can create a life of clarity and abundance. I'm your host, Paul Cousineau, transformational leader, tuning in with you every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. You can learn more about our global spiritual community by visiting thespiritualvoice.com. Today's guest was referred by a mutual friend. You're in for a real treat. Trust me. As I've been exposed to his insights, the words love and fun come true very clearly. It is with great joy that I'm introducing him to you. Satyan Raja combines the power of the warrior and the wisdom of the sage to inspire audiences worldwide. He is a unique blend of power and heart. After 35 years of full-time immersion in researching and practicing over 20 healing and life-forwarding modalities, he has synthesized what really works in real time to advance our true happiness and live in harmony and freedom. He founded the Accelerated Evolution Academy, which is a revolutionary academy utilizing cutting-edge methods of coaching, therapy, and human potential to train leaders. You can find out more about this awesome academy at acceleratedevolutionacademy.com. And he also uses his intuition and his experience to ripen you by exposing your deepest heart and gifts. He sees you at your core and takes you past your edge where real transformation takes place. He leads professional trainings, hosts exotic retreats, and does private one-on-one mentoring with leading CEOs and high-profile individuals. One of these retreats is Sex, Power, and Money, which he co-hosts with his wife, which you can find out more about at warriorsage.com to get on the VIP invitation list. Satyan's focus on bringing the teachings into your physical body and into your real life rather than just lecturing, which sets him apart from other teachers and empowers you to make lasting changes in your life. This makes him a perfect guest to have on the show. He is a leader, mentor, guide, and accelerated evolutionist extraordinaire. Welcome to the Spiritual Voice, Satyan. Thank you so much for having me. And I really like your energy, so I know this is going to be lots of fun and and supportive to everyone listening. Well, thank you so much for coming here. And one of the things that I discovered as I was getting in tune to some of your teachings and the videos that I've been able to see is that you talk a lot about the heart, the mind, the soul, and more importantly, love. And what I'd be curious of knowing first is how did these concepts start showing up in your life and how did you discover about them? Well, when I was a young fellow, I became very inspired by watching Bruce Lee and a TV show called Kung Fu with David Carradine. And those, you know, martial artists combined with this deep spiritual essence really influenced me, inspired me, the idea that one could be so deadly in one world and so compassionate and healing and loving and wise in another world. So I embarked on an adventure of the warrior sage. I sought out different martial art trainings and teachers until I came upon uh, my mentors in, in Kung Fu, who really showed me the way of service, the way of the heart, that as a true warrior, as a true sage, that the flow of love, the offering of love, the magnification of love, if I could make that the cornerstone of my life, that I would live a happy and fulfilled life. And they were right. (laughs) They were very (laughs) right. So love to me is the magnification of union, bringing families together, lovers together, going from separation to deeper and deeper closeness, ultimately to experiencing that there is a oneness, a total oneness between myself and all beings, and that we ultimately all are not just metaphorically connected, but we actually are. And when we wake up to that, and when we nourish that knowing, when we honor that knowing, then life becomes magical rather than a life of struggle. 
I like how you're talking about the connection between us. Although one of the challenges that I found is actually living and experiencing it. As I've been delving in meditation and engaging in relationships, sometimes it seems like it's more of a theoretical concept. And then when you get into practice, it's the separation is much more is much more prevalent. So how do we experience that connection in our lives? Well, it's very, you're right. It is very one-sided and stacked and the forces of, of tension and stress and struggle and shallowness are, are far greater than the forces of depth and clarity and deeper consciousness and love. And these things sound great, you know, in talks and sound great in books and when we're hearing it from some wise person, yet living it is the key. And that's why I like martial arts for myself. There's no bullshit, you know. If I'm dialed in and I'm focused and my mind is there, it shows up in class. And, you know, the particular martial art that I study is Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And when I'm unfocused, when I'm disconnected, when I'm having a bad day, when my mind is all full of erratic thoughts and, and tension, then it shows up. It shows up in my experience in my martial arts. The same thing is happening in our life. And so, you know, in this path of the warrior sage that I advocate, there's four realms that I like to work on, actually five, and they are faith, family, finance, fitness, and fun. And one of my mentors, Kevin Nations, introduced me to these Fs and, you know, faith, family, finance, fitness, and fun. So if you imagine, if things aren't working well in those realms, that means that we're not aligned. If things are working well in any of those realms, that there is an alignment. So for me, the first practical thing to do is look at our faith, our connection to ourselves, our connection to the cosmos, our connection to our self-belief, our connection to our knowingness. And on a scale of 1 to 10, ask ourselves, where do we stand? Is it weak? Is it medium? Is it strong? And if it's weak, then we must do something about it. It's the same as in... Uh, finance or or family and sexuality and relationships all we have to do is cultivate a discerning eye a warrior's eye with honesty with truth and self-reflection and see am i am i really on track here or am i off and if if i'm off then to really put my foot down and start studying learning as, as as people are doing right now they're coming to this podcast absorb to learn In the same way, we must learn, but we must also act on the lessons we've learned. You're mentioning evaluating ourselves on a scale of 1 to 10. I believe this must be a very relative process, uh, or maybe not. So how would one go about taking these five spheres and then giving themselves a rating? Would they compare themselves to others? Well, they can just simply take a piece of paper, and they can even listen to this again and do it along with us, and take a look at, Let's say, for example, their faith, their self-belief, their worth, their sense of accomplishment in life, their sense of connection with the invisible, with the divine, and ask themselves, where do I feel with this on a scale of one to ten? One being it's very short, very shallow, they feel disconnected, they feel isolated, alone. And ten is the other extreme. It's they feel totally aligned and flowing with the cosmos. They feel that what they intend from their heart just shows up without strife, without struggle. And they feel that they're on mission, on purpose, that there's a higher purpose of living and and they know what it is. This is a deep flow state of life, what I call the life of the sage, the wisdom within us. So take a look. Where do you stand on a scale of 1 to 10? And give yourself a subjective number and write that down. One of the things that I was wondering is once you've rated yourself, what is the goal of it? Is it to have 10 out of 10 in all categories? That's, that's you know, it's, it's an impossibility, but it's an intention. So, you know, our car doesn't have to be on top gas all the time. You're going to drive it for a few minutes right out of the gas station, and it's going to start just by the use of driving a car. <laughs> the, the, the gas tank is going to go down. So there's no problem if you've got a lower number. This is the one thing to recognize. It's just an area to bring awareness on. It's not a danger. I mean, it can be a danger if they're all at, especially the health one, the, the fitness. So let's move on to fitness and take a look. 
you know, fitness is the core of our being. How we as spiritual beings live our life is through our bodies. We can have great altruistic ideas and thoughts and desires to make differences in the world. But if our body is, is, is not strong, if we don't have that power to wake up in the morning and to activate and actualize our goal and our soul's intention, then really um, we have, we have a, uh, uh, the essence, but we don't have the capacity to execute. So our body, ask yourself on a scale of 1 to 10, how do you feel about it? It's vitality, your flexibility, the power in your body. You know yourself how well you eat, how well you exercise, the rest that you're getting, and the state of equilibrium of your body. And give that a rating from 1 to 10 right now. Honestly, how you feel right now. Next is family. Let's take a look at our, your family life. And by family, your siblings, perhaps your spouse if you're married or you have a partner in your life, what is the state of passion? What is the state of truth? What is the state of affinity and flow and connection with any one of these people? Maybe some is really good and some you're having some strife or some challenge or some distancing. Again, it's not a problem, but it's an honest self-evaluation. Give yourself that. And if you do have a partner, a spouse, a sexual partner, ask yourself that. How is your sex life? Are you having passionate connection? Are you connecting deep and having profound sexual experiences? Or is it dry or flat or ho-hum? Where are you at with that? Give yourself a number, one to 10. And we're going to come back to these and work, pick one that's the lowest. And we're going to go through a process to actually um, take it up to another level next year, okay? So we've talked about faith, talked about family, talked about fitness. The other one is finance. Where is our earning? Where is your earning? Do you feel good about your earning? Are you earning what you'd like, less than you'd like, more? Are you happy with it? Your finances have to do with your earning. Take a look at your spending. Is it within your means, beyond your means? Are you miserly? Are you holding back so that you, because you're scared, you may lose it? What's the health of that? Your earning, your savings, your spending, and your investing. This is the realm of finances. Give yourself an honest rating, one to 10. 10 meaning there's tremendous abundance and flow and ease, and you're at balance. You're in equilibrium in your own being around it. And one is you're underneath a lot of stress. There's a feeling of lack. You're fighting to pay the bills. Where do you fall in this? Find your own rating. And then the last one we'll look at is fun. The level of fun, the level of joy in your life, the level of pizzazz and freedom, the ability to get up and laugh at life, the ability to enjoy the simple things, going for walks, enjoying the day, painting, chatting with your children, chatting with your friends, um, playing games, achieving, you know, having sports in your life. You know, we're doing... Um, Having fun in your work, you know, is it is it tiresome and boring and draining you or, is it, or are you injecting the sense of fun and lightness and aliveness and dance and play? So fun is vital. And to me, it's the underlying has to be everything has to be done with fun and have that within our, our spectrum of being. So let's take a breath for a moment. Just a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And I've asked you to look at these questions in, of faith, family, finance, fitness, and fun, and to give yourself an honest self-evaluation. And just by doing that, you're increasing your awareness. And as a warrior sage, increasing your units of awareness is the first step to mastery. Because if you don't know, you don't know. You don't know what to improve in or what to bring your attention to. So the warrior sage doesn't let these things just fall away they take them on and they make a commitment to act in spite of any fear act in spite of any resistance or any procrastination so i'm going to now ask everyone um, to get ready we're going to do a mental emotional internal exercise to help empower 
and dissolve perhaps an obstacle that's in the way of your lowest rating. So find which one is at your lowest rating. And brother Paul, if I can ask, would you be open to share and work through this with me so that everyone can follow along? For sure. That's a great idea. Okay. So Paul, pick which one you would like to make the most advance in wisdom and peace with. I'm picking the finance area. Okay. Finance area. So finance has many dualities. And what we're going to work on right now, this is a method from our Accelerated Evolution Academy, and it's called duality or polarity integration. So find a, you know, Paul, with the realm of finances, what's the stress you're having? What, what, what's the tension you're having with it? One of the tensions that I have is that I've just done significant investments in my business, and then I have to trust the process now that follows with uh, basically gathering some inflows as a result of these investments. But I had first to put the money down for these projects. So now it's, it's having that confidence that these projects will follow through. So... I want you to look for, and everyone, as we're going through this with Paul, look for the polarity within yourself, the duality. So with money, there's many dualities. I deserve abundance. I don't deserve. I am worthy. I am unworthy. Those are very common ones. Um, another common one around money and spirituality is that money is separate from spirituality. I have to do money separately. And my spirituality has to be separate. Another common uh, duality regarding money is that money is bad. You know, money is not uh, a good thing. Uh, only rich people have money and rich people have stepped on others. So it's a negative association with money. So, Paul, if you were to choose a, a, a two opposites that you have regarding money or business, Let's explore that. What would they be? Two opposites. So I, I deserve, I don't deserve, or anything like that. The one that is calling more to me is I, money and spirituality are separate or money and spirituality are not separate. That's the tension right now. Yes. Okay, got it. Money and spirituality. This is a very powerful one. And I have to tell you, I worked on this years ago as well. I came my... Father's side are all entrepreneurs and business people for many generations. And my mother's side are all doctors and healers and, uh, and of the Gandhi philosophy of, of social help and, and the other extreme, really. And so I grew up with both these influences, and, I, and they were battling really inside of myself for many years until I actually went through this. And now money and spirituality, there's no difference. So what I'm going to ask everyone to do is find your duality. Perhaps join me along. If you can't find one yourself, join Paul along with the same one. And we're going to work on money and spirituality. So everyone, what we're going to do is I'm going to get you to feel that feel the money in its powerful form. Money is a positive thing. And you're going to feel that fully. And then you're going to feel it for about 10 seconds. And then, Paul, you're going to say something about it, whatever comes up when you feel money, the principle of money. Then I'm going to have everyone feel the essence of spirituality. Feel it fully without holding it back, dramatize it, in fact. Feel spirituality to its core. Then I'm going to ask you to release that. And then we're going to go back to money. Then we're going to teeter-totter again to spirituality. We're going to go back and forth a couple of times. And then I'm going to ask you to do something interesting. I'm going to ask you to feel money and spirituality at the same time while you're taking a deep breath in and out. And something's going to happen. They're going to start to merge. And I'm going to ask you to share, Paul, what goes on, what's happening between the two. And we're going to do this cycle quite quickly, and we're going to do it three times. And at the end of it, the intention is that these two merge into union and that within yourself, what used to be fighting forces now become one, become aligned, and you accelerate your evolution regarding money and spirituality. So you're ready? 
totally. Okay, so let's feel money right now. Feel money fully. Everyone feel money fully. Whatever image you have, whatever thought you have, whatever emotions you have, whatever body sensations you have around money, dramatize it and then say something about it. Money is giving and taking. And and I feel it is an allocation. There is a... Yeah, I, I feel strongly that taking aspect of money. Thank you. Okay, let that go now. And now feel fully spirituality. Just feel spirituality alone. What it means to you. Magnify it and dramatize it. And when you're there, say something about that. Spirituality feels like rain falling down. It's it's nourishing the soil. It's sustenance. Beautiful. Thank you. Let go of that side. Now, everyone follow along. Once again, let's focus on money. Really feel what money is for you, the truth of it. And then say something about it. Money provides freedom. Money provides option in our ability to create. Very good. And now I'd like you to feel just spirituality. Feel spirituality fully. And then say something about it. Spirituality is connecting with kindred spirits. It's being open to the web of life. And it is what is the bond between communities, people. Yes. Thank you. Now, I'd like you to feel money and spirituality at the same time while you take a slow, deep breath in and out. And share what's happening between the two. I'm feeling a merger of the concepts. Uh, the first thing that comes true is that it is the freedom of the people. It is what is liberating us, is that, that merger. I'm also feeling some tension throughout my body. There's a certain energetic charge that is happening. Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, take a breath and let that all go. And now we're going to go through this once again, this time a little faster. So everyone, join along here. And the more you feel both sides fully, the more you dive into it and magnify and dramatize each side, rather than observing or stepping back, the more you get into it, you have a greater potential here to make a lifelong breakthrough by having more peace with this circumstance rather than a division. So really, I'm going to encourage you to go even stronger this time. Everyone, feel spirituality, what that means to you now. Magnify it. Dramatize it. And when something comes up, just say it into the space. Spirituality is like a kiss of love. Thank you. Now feel money. Dive into what the truth of money is, the essence of money, and then say something about that. Money is the spirit of collaboration and exchange. Beautiful. Let go of money. And now feel, once again, spirituality. Is there any part of it that you haven't looked into or felt into? You can feel into it now. Spirituality, spiritual life spiritual consciousness feel it fully dramatize it and then when something comes up just say it into the space spirituality is the great unknown it's the void yes and now once again feel the power of money the truth of money the essence of what money is and then say something about it into the space 
money is our collective blood. It is the flow that interconnects all of us. Beautiful. And now once again, feel just spirituality. Enter the essence, magnify the essence, the truth of spirituality, spiritual life, spiritual awakening. And when you're ready, say something about it into the space. Spirituality is the realization of our divine self, the sacred union. Beautiful. Now, once again, feel money and together spirituality at the same time and take a slow, long inhalation and exhalation. And just feel what's happening between these two. And when you're ready, share what's happening between the two into the space. I'm feeling and having a strong, vivid experience that money is one of the material manifestation of the spiritual essence. It is the construct of that divine union. And I'm actually feeling my heartbeat accelerate as I'm as I'm sharing this. There's a, there's a big smile on my face, and I can I can see I I can see how it is the creative process of of that void. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Let that expand out infinitely in all directions. And we're going to go through the cycle. One more time. Once again, everyone, feel money fully. Do your best to isolate it. It's going to be more difficult to isolate them as separate things. But if there is any isolation left of just the concept of money, go ahead and feel that. Dive into it. Money. However you visualize, see, and experience it now. And then say something about it into this space. Money is the transfer of knowledge as well as our material world. Yes. Very good. Feel spirituality fully and then say something about it. I'm feeling a rainbow of colors and sparkles. It's, it's art and creativity. Yes. Thank you. And now feel once again money. Feel money fully. And then say something about it. Money is the vehicle. It is the container of our essence. Feel spirituality. The depth and the truth of it. And then say something about it. Spirituality is the observer. I'm feeling the awareness, the seeing. I have a strong sense of, of the presence. Yes. Once again, feel just money fully. Magnify your awareness and knowingness of money. And then say something about it. Money is the soil, the dirt, the crops and the seeds. The nourishment and now once again i want you to feel spirituality the heart of it the essence of it and then say something about that spirituality is the abandonment the freedom letting go the the air and the wind and the space and now Feel money and spirituality together as you take a slow, deep breath in and out and share openly, expressively what's happening between the two or what has happened between the two. I'm feeling a deep, 
connection of the the sky and the earth i'm i'm actually having a visual of rain falling onto crops and the human labor of love that is going into it the feeding of families the the relationship with the plants with the animals as well as the the mystery of having this this food come about with this this passage of time and this this love and this this concentration thank you expand infinitely in all directions this awareness let the cascade out in front of you behind you to the sides of you above and below you And tell me now, regarding money and spirituality, have they become one? Yes. <laughs> they, they are clearly in a form of union inside and around me. And I'm amazed at this deep realization that is being felt in the core of my being in my cells. In this precise moment, I, I feel a surge actually of of energy and happiness, and and I'm, I have to say I'm immensely grateful right now for this this experience. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'm going to ask everyone here some integration questions that'll help bring this into life. So from your core truth, what are you more conscious of now than before? regarding money and spirituality. I'm more conscious than that money is one of the manifestation of these desires of our collective creativity and that it is simply one part of our of the process and then that this this tangible creation re-inspires this creative process, there's a dance that is happening between them. Thank you. What is good about going through this for you, for yourself, going through this unification? What is good is that I'm realizing that one is not at the expense of the other, but rather that there's a synergy happening and that as the energy of money is magnified, so is spirituality and vice versa. And I'm feeling this, an immense release now in this inner conflict, this tension that, that was in my being a moment ago. Beautiful. What is good about this for others? How will going through this serve others? This will provide what it means in, for people to grow under spiritual path and to access this unknown and this void and this, this fate through the process of creating tangibly. And I'm also feeling that for those people that have been working more on what I call the, the iteral, it is providing them a means to bring their creations to the eyes of others and to share what has been perhaps invisible right now. Yes. Thank you. What's valuable about the unity of money and spirituality? It's a way for us to come together and to live in joy. And I, and I see a lot of happiness, actually. There, I, I, I'm feeling this small laughter inside of me. And it's a celebration of our world, of our, of our beingness, and of what is uniting us, as well as the freedom that, that is available in every single moment. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh tell me what have you learned from this i have learned that these forces which i thought were opposing and in conflict i i was honestly feeling a strong stress in me and anxiety around these two particular energies 
and and I've learned that really these are powerful allies and that I can use this now and help others make this connection so that D2 can have this immense feeling now that, that I'm feeling. It, it, it's almost indescribable. But I really feel like this is giving me a gift to bring forward to everyone around us so that we can all tap into our creative aspects as well as into our unknown and subtle qualities. Yes, exactly. And my last question of you is, what is the one thing that you can do now that when having done it, your life will become simpler, easier, more flowing, more in line with truth? Spend at least one minute in, in my morning practice to reconnect and to magnify the connection between the energy of money and spirituality and, and really feel into their essence allowing them to merge like, like just happened and is happening. Beautiful. Thank you all, yourself, Paul, and everyone who's participating for your willingness. And know that you can work on any of your dualities by listening to this podcast again and taking another set of two and having this internal experience that is that's real and powerful and that will really take the gear up from struggle into greater freedom. So take a couple of deep breaths and when you're ready, you can just come back to presence here. Thank you so much, Satyan. I have to say that I'm, I'm feeling quite exhilarated in this precise moment. This experience has been extremely powerful. And I also have to express gratitude on behalf of everyone that is listening right now, as I feel that this will be a powerful technique that can bring union, peace, as well as strength in, in each of their lives. Thank you so much. Uh, you are most welcome. It's my honor and my pleasure. Oh, at the, at this moment, I would just like to take a short break, and then after that, we can pursue our discussion. We all want to feel connected, that we belong, that we're loved. We find ourselves attending social events with the hope of finding a place that we'll fit in. It shows up when we go for beer after work, and we don't even like beer. We avoid drinking wine with yoga friends. We pretend to like sports or agree with someone's opinion when secretly we don't. The outcome always seems to be the same. We end up feeling the frustration of not being able to make any connection. It's like going back to childhood when we were the last one picked on the dodgeball team and getting bruised for being the lone wolf. That's why you're going to love the Spiritual Voice community, where you're welcome so you can freely explore and express yourself and be supported by people that get you. You can live life with a sense of awe from your favorite childhood storybook and dance in the rain because it makes your heart sing. You get exclusive access to learn from top spiritual experts, you practice in real time with people that are cheering for you like you're a rock star, and you get to learn techniques from all schools of thoughts so you never have to fake it again to fit in. Your journey begins by typing in thespiritualvoice.com forward slash being you. I'm going to say that again, thespiritualvoice.com forward slash being you. Permission to be you granted. We're back with Satyan and he just guided us through a very, I would describe powerful experience so that we can actually work around dualities and, and polarities in the areas of our life where we feel that we need it the most. And one of the five areas that you had mentioned earlier was the area of fun. And if that's okay with you, I'd like for you to expand a little bit more on that as I've as I was journeying on my spiritual path, sometimes it felt like fun had to be removed from the equation. So where does fun actually fit in? Well, you know, fun is the polarity of seriousness. And there's times to be serious and focused and uh, determined and focus on execution of plans and 
and actions. Yet, we burn ourselves out if we don't have the joy of fun, the feminine side, the, the one who enjoys life, the one who's free. At the end of the day, no matter what we attain, uh, no matter what success we achieve, there will be an, an eventual decline. There'll be an eventual dissolving back into um, the dust. <laughs> we all are destined physically, at least for that. Yet fun is the commitment to have enjoyment now, that my life is worth being happy for now, that I don't have to project my future uh, enjoyment and fun when I've attained something in the future. You know, the the number one masculine masculine illusion within our being is thinking that someday down the road that I'll be finally free enough to enjoy my life and to have the fun I want. And the feminine illusion that we have within our being is one day someone somehow or my love will be filled with, my heart will be filled with love and then I'll be truly be happy. Nothing could be further from the truth. We actually have to have the freedom and the love and the joy and the fun now, which then paradoxically creates more, draws more and makes us not only our own life more fulfilling, it makes other people want to be around us. And when other people want to be around us, then there's greater expansion of fun. So for me, fun is one of the essentials that I had to learn the hard way, being uh, coming from a very serious mindset, martial art mindset. I've made fun the cornerstone now. And it makes my life with my wife so much better. It makes my kids enjoy me far more. Because I'm not so, I, I don't only focus on being driven. I focus on the enjoyment, the lusciousness, the space, the gift of life right now, today. Yeah, because I find too, for me, seriousness was certainly one of the strong components of my life. I trained as a CPA and it, fun was perceived as an obstacle. And it's exactly what you described. I burned myself out. It's like I didn't see any more point to everything that I was accomplishing. And paradoxically, my my family was declining. My relationship with my fitness or my my health was also declining. And I can now understand how fun can inject us in, can inject a fuel in our life and a drive. So what, what advice perhaps would we have for someone that might see fun as something that could be threatening what they've been building? Because I know that was certainly the case for me. You know, this is the case with any entrepreneur, any strong business person or anyone with strong goals. Uh, I know this because I live it and I've lived it in my coaching with leaders. We, we face this all the time. It's the same thing, my friend, what we just did today. Put fun on one side of the equation of the polarity and put on the other side, work hard, determination, uh, attaining goals, and then go through this listening experience again and integrate those two uh, polarities and watch the magic unfold. It'll be, a, it'll be much harder to be focused without fun. Uh, and, and you'll value the power of both of them once you've come to the end of the uh, integration and they become one. So that's, there's the mental advice I can give. But as a warrior sage, I want to give everyone here a practical experience that they can have the transformation from the inside, not just mentally, you know. I love that. I'm on board with you. And as uh, I was introducing you, I, I did mention sex, power, and money retreat that you will be hosting. And I have to say, I'm very curious about how that gets blended in together. <laughs> well, you know, sex, power, and money, or sex and relationships, power and influence, money and the capacity to generate total freedom in one's life and one's time to experience all that life has to offer. Sex, power, and money have traditionally been the ruin of many successful people, you know? Um, but they also, for the warrior sage, are a portal to wisdom, ecstasy, and enlightenment, for real. And so my wife, Suzanne, and I, we give occasional retreats where we dive into what is one's greatest weakness or unconsciousness around sex and relationships, 
power and influence, uh, money and freedom. And then like a dojo, a martial art dojo, we go right into that psyche area and clean it up, open it, transform it, heal it, and awaken it. And when, it, when those three areas become awakened and we have our sex, our power, and our money operating at a high level of caliber from a soul level of being, then what happens is there's a profound type of freedom that emerges. You experienced it with money and spirituality in a short, just a few moments. In this, we want to make sure that sex, power, and money don't ruin people's lives, but that they become the power and a joy and a, and, a, and a gift that they can bring to the world. So that's the essence of the retreats that we go through. And it's also a lot of fun uh, because fun and, and good times and great bonding is the essence of the path of the warrior sage. If it wouldn't be a lot of fun, I would be calling you out on that one for sure. <laughs> <laughs> you betcha. And, and how long are these? Because I realized with this simple practice, that was very short and extremely powerful. I'm still feeling this resonating in my entire being. So how long is this process that you're describing throughout the retreat? We go. Th it's a three-day retreat, and we hold them. And these are by exclusive invitation. So if anyone has a call, they resonate with what I'm sharing, this principle of the warrior sage, as well as they wish to master sex, power, and money, then we have a private invitation list. And um, I invite anyone who's interested in that to go to warriorsage.com, warriorsage.com, and just put your name on the invitation list. And we'll ask just a few questions. And then when uh, we release the dates and open the doors to that, those who have put their name on the list will be first chosen and first to uh, be invited to this exclusive event. That sounds very good. And I, I really enjoy that process as well. I think to the, the fact that people write a few answers to questions allows us as well to reflect why do, you, do we want to experience this in our lives? And not only for this retreat, but I feel like a lot of our experiences, why do we want this? Uh, is that one of the reasons why you're asking these questions or what, what is the reasoning behind it? Well, I want to know what, where you need to be served, truly served. And based on where one needs to be truly served, that's where we like to go right into and strengthen first of all right away and also the other thing is is you know the type of people i work with that we choose to bring on to our retreats are people who have a desire in the course of our world they have a care for the world condition they have strong goals and visions within themselves they're powerful people they're people of influence and they they know that to master life that they have to master themselves so we want to make sure that it's a right match and a right fit and more importantly we want to know what people's goals are so we can help them attain it that sounds terrific so in addition to warriorsage.com what are the other places where our listeners could get in touch with you well that's our main website and there's also accelerated evolution academy.com I'll repeat that, acceleratedevolutionacademy.com. And this is academy of, you know, this duality integration process I took you through. In our academy, I train therapists, physicians, business coaches, business leaders, uh, anyone interested in making a difference in other people's lives. I train them in these methods so that they can make a profound impact in their own profession, personally, as well as with the clients that they serve. And um, to find out more, to have a personal, more in-depth experience of that, I invite everyone to go to acceleratedevolutionacademy.com and to absorb the accolades there. And uh, if drawn, to, to actually have an experience of it further than what we've done here today, and to see if this is something that they wish to bring into their professional lives as well. Fantastic. So what I will do is include all of these links in our show notes. So if you're listening perhaps on a drive or in a location that you're not able to take notes, don't worry, you'll be able to get all of these details through the website. Uh, Satyan, it was amazing to have you with us. And I would like to offer you a chance to share a closing word with our audience. 
what I would love to share is our mission here at Warrior Sage. And when you listen to this, let it ignite your own mission. Let find in some place within you the place to ignite passion, be the example to live freedom, and be the example to embody love. Thank you very much, my friends, and uh, much love and freedom in your own personal and professional lives. We're the one thanking you, Satyan, and I appreciate those words, especially the passion for me it raises that fire and that flame inside of me. And I'm sure that these must be resonating as well with our audience. And to you, the listeners, I do appreciate you taking this commitment to yourself, to your own journey, to your own development, to your success, your happiness, and fun in your life as well if you did enjoy this episode of the spiritual voice it would be very appreciated if you left a review for us on itunes and stitcher as well as share it with a friend or a person that you know that would also benefit from what satyan shared with us you can also find out more about the spiritual voice in our global community as well as the show notes by visiting the spiritual voice.com I'm deeply grateful to you, Satyan, for having come here and sharing your wisdom and your insights. And again, uh, much gratitude on behalf of all of our audience. Thank you. Thank you very much. Today's episode was brought to you by the Spiritual Voice Community, where heart-centered seekers connect to build meaningful relationships, grow their spiritual practice together, and celebrate life to rediscover what it means to laugh and smile every day. Head over to thespiritualvoice.com for full recaps of every show, our amazing resources, and to join the Spiritual Voice community today.